Good morning, church. What a beautiful day this is. The sky is clear and the warmth of the sun is so pleasant. It does seem strange that on a day as such as this that we should be uh, having to be away from our church building, from our, from our facilities. But even though the, the main roads are clear, many of the side roads are still very icy and dangerous. And of course, uh, the last thing we wanted would be for anyone of our congregation to get involved in an accident and, and, and maybe uh, suffer injuries. So once again, uh, we are doing this uh, remotely. Uh, going to be pasting on uh, YouTube and on Facebook this message. Uh, but one day soon, uh, I'm sure of it, one day soon we will again be able to assemble for worship in our building without fear of the elements or of a dreaded illness. We must be patient. We must continue to pray to the Lord and to constantly praise Him, praise His holy name for all that He does for us. Today, I will begin the message a little differently. I'll begin by reading the words of a, a few of stanzas of a very old song written in the early 1900s by a Southern preacher by the name of Guy Smith. I really don't know anything about him, but I have heard the song from as far back as I can remember. It has been recorded by several country singers, including Roy Acuff, Johnny Cash, Kitty Wells, and even uh, the pop and rock and roll and sometimes country star Jerry Lee Lewis. The song was uh, included in one of the old paperback songbooks that we had at uh, Pleasant Hill Baptist Church, the first pastor that I had. And uh, we used to sing this song in, in congregation. Uh, it was a very, uh, very much uh, loved song for our, our people. Uh, the song uh, uh, is quite different. Uh, it says the history of it is a little bit unclear. And uh, I don't know anything about uh, the, the preacher, Brother Guy Smith, who wrote it. I tried to find a few things on, uh, on uh, the Internet, but couldn't come up with a whole lot. Uh, this song, as it was originally uh, composed, had eight verses. I'm not going to read all of those. I'm going to read, but I am going to read uh, probably four or five of them. So I want you to listen closely to these words. Some of you may have heard this song before. It begins, What a beautiful thought I am thinking concerning a great speckled bird. Remember, her name is recorded on the pages of God's holy word. All the other birds are flocking around her, and she is despised by the squad. But the great speckled bird in the Bible is one with the great church of God. Desiring to lower her standards, they watch every move that she makes. They long to find fault with her teachings, but really they find no mistakes. I am glad I have learned of her meekness. I am proud that my name is on her book for I want to be one never fearing on the face of my Savior to look. When he cometh descending from heaven on the cloud as he writes in his word, I'll be joyfully carried to meet him on the wings of that great speckled bird. The title of the song, of course, is The Great Speckled Bird. The scripture from which the title comes is found in Jeremiah chapter 12. Now, I'm only going to read uh, verses 8 through 17, but I encourage you to read uh, the entire chapter, and in fact, read uh, some of the chapters just preceding this. But listen as I read Jeremiah chapter 12, beginning with verse 8. Mine heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It crieth out against me, therefore have I hated it. Mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about her are against her. 
Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field, come to devour. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard and have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate, and being desolate, it mourneth unto me. The whole land is made desolate, because no man layeth it to heart. The spoilers are come upon all high places through the wilderness. For the sword of the Lord shall devour from one end of the land even to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. They have sworn, uh, sown wheat, but shall reap thorns. They have put themselves to pain, but shall not profit. And they shall be ashamed of you, of your revenues, because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord against all mine evil neighbors that touch the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them out of the land, and pluck out of the house of Judah from among them. And it shall come to pass after that I have plucked them out. I will return and have compassion on them and will bring them again, every man to his heritage and every man to his land. And it shall come to pass if they will diligently learn, diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name, the Lord liveth as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then shall they be built in the midst of my people. But if they will not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, saith the Lord. This passage of scripture includes the last portion of a message delivered by the prophet Jeremiah to the people of Judah concerning the age-long problem of the successes of the wicked. It also includes an appendix to the message expressing the prophet's sorrow that Judah and all the children of Israel had turned hostilities toward God. The people had become exceedingly wicked, adopting the ways of the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Syrians as they had overtaken the chosen of God. However, in the end, these would share the fate of exile with Judah when the Babylonians carried them into captivity. By the same measure, those who become uh, allies with the evil world will share the judgment that comes upon the world. Those clinging to hope in Christ, however, those believing in Jesus will be borne up, as the scripture says, as on the wings of a great bird, as the writer of this song, no doubt, envisioned, on the wings of the great speckled bird. The first line of the song that I'm going to reference in this message is, uh, is this, desiring to lower her standards. In the prophet's day, as now, those who would not have part with God's people uh, watched every move made by the faithful. We know that that's true today. We know how people have their eyes on the church and on those who claim to be children of God. They look for every flaw, no matter how small, and try to build it into monumental size that they may criticize and, and belittle the Christian and the Christian faith and with the hopes of driving us into hiding or absolutely just uh, wiping us uh, from existence. They long to find fault with the teachings of the church and of those Christians who try to live out their faith. Verse 8 tells us that they are roaring as lions against the church. Now, not in those exact words, but listen again to what it says in verse 8. Mine heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It crieth out against me. Therefore have I hated it. The enemies of the church... Those who stand opposed to Christianity or anything Christian are truly as raving lions, uh, roaring against us all kinds of accusations, all kinds of uh, slanderous remarks made about the Christian faith. They truly uh, are against us and against the church and desire to absolutely devour her, to destroy her. 
Uh, certainly we know how this is in our day. The world roars among, uh, against anything Christian. They truly desire not only to lower our standards, to belittle us, but to destroy us completely. Oh, I've heard just in recent days that uh, people have the freedom of religion as long as they keep it to themselves. You see, they don't want us to be evangelistic. They don't want us to go out into the world proclaiming the gospel of Christ. We must decide uh, even now who we will listen to. Will it be the world who wants to destroy us or will it be the Lord our God who has commissioned us to go into the world to teach them everything that he has commanded, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Folks, uh, the Bible tells us, God tells us through his word, that we are to go into the world. We are to proclaim the gospel of Christ to everyone, to every creature who will listen to us, that they may come to uh, desire the saving grace of God, and they may be forgiven of their sins and their souls saved, and that their name might be written on his book, the Quebec Lamb's Book of Life. We uh, are ever forever in the sights of those who want to put us out of existence. And it's not just the pagan world against us, but also many who are identified even as churches are against us. The enemy has infiltrated many of the churches and turned them against the true church and to, against the truth. Verse 9 remind, reminds us that birds will attack birds of an unfamiliar plumage. It says, mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about her are against her. Come ye assemble all ye beasts of the field, come and devour. Now, many of you may not know this, but if you have a flock of birds, and I know this from experience, having been reared on a chicken farm, we had thousands of chickens and I observed these chickens uh, on a daily basis, but birds, which are all alike and familiar with one another, get along fine. But if one bird in the flock gets a spot on its feathers, perhaps a drop of blood from a, from a small injury, the other birds will attack the speckled bird and literally peck her to death. Or you can take a bird of a, a completely different uh, nature and put in the midst of of those other birds, and they will attack her. Well, these birds, uh, and the, the speckled bird, uh, is identified in the song as uh, the, the church of the, of the living God. Uh, these other birds are the other so-called churches and religions who are roundabout seeking to destroy uh, the church of God. Uh, verses 10 through 13 uh, from our reading, reveal that the pastors, the leaders of the nations uh, of the church also have destroyed the vineyards initially, and the enemy from outside has destroyed it finally. This is a sad thing, but it's true. If you, you see how that even the faithful of God, among the faithful of God, there were those who were uh, dr uh, drifted away and, not, and began to be hostile toward God, began to accept the ways of the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Syrians, and, uh, from, and began to de uh, uh, destroy the nation of God from within. We have seen like things happening uh, in the Christian church today. We have seen uh, how that some churches, maybe once uh, very good and very true to the word, have slowly but surely turned away from the truth and have incorporated lies into their doctrines. And rather than being great shining lights for the honor and glory of God, they have become a hindrance to the furtherance of his kingdom. And they are literally trying to, uh, are aiding in the destruction of the church in our world today. Now, another line uh, from the song. It says, in the presence of all her despisers. Well, just when the world thought in, Je in uh, Jeremiah's day that the ch God's chosen were to be devoured, God delivered them. Just when the world 
comes to celebrate a supposed victory over the church, and this is yet to come. But when the world comes together to rejoice that they have finally destroyed the church of God, as the song says, with a song never uttered before, she will rise and be gone in a moment. The scripture, scripture tells us clearly, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. As is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. The time of Jacob, Jacob's troubles will then prevail in all the world. We know this uh, in our teaching as the great tribulation. Those who have despised God's elect will see his wrath. Those who have learned, though, of his meekness, uh, the meekness of his church, and by faith in Jesus have their names recorded in his book and will look without fear upon his glorious face. All of God's children will finally be gathered home. Verse 14 says, Thus saith the Lord against all mine evil neighbors that touch the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. And it shall come to pass that after I have plucked them out, I will return and have compassion on them. And I will bring them again, every man to his heritage and every man to his land. And it shall come to pass if they will dil diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name, the Lord liveth as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then shall they be built in the midst of my people. But if they will not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, saith the Lord. God has accomplished this in part with Israel. He has plucked them out of all the nations and established them in the land which he gave them. From these of Israel, along with men of all nations, he will gather his elect children. We know this to be true because we have read and studied his word and we have sought an understanding and guidance by the Holy Spirit to understand our standing before God and what is in store for us, those of us who believe and those who do not believe. I'm going to go ahead and bring this message to a close. And to do that, I'm going to conclude the message with the final couple of verses of the song. Her wings shelter men of all nations, of earth's ever color and race. She has gathered them all in her keeping to present to the Lord face to face. When Christ cometh descending from heaven, on the clouds as he writes in his word, I'll be joyfully carried, carried to meet him on the wings of that great speckled bird. Friends, we're living in uncertain and perilous times. We have faced things over the last year, a little over a year, that we never imagined. But this is only the beginning of the troubles that are going to come on this world. We see the church, uh, uh, the, the true church, standing as proud and strong, as powerful as ever. And she will remain so until the Lord comes to receive her unto himself. But what the world sees as the church has crumbled, has fallen into ruin. Many of those denominations which no longer adhere to the truth of the scriptures, those who have gotten so liberal in their thinking that they're hardly recognizable as a true church of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, have, uh, have tarnished the world's view of the church. But the Lord is still in charge, and he is still taking care of his people. And just as this passage of scripture uh, shows that uh, those who would, even in their perilous time, would turn to the Lord, that he would snatch them up, he would preserve them, he would uh, establish them 
for eternity. So is his promise to his church of our age. Those who believe in him, those who have accepted his atoning sacrifice will be spared the great tribulation. He will pull us away and he will establish us with himself uh, while the world sees the wrath of God. Uh, in the song, the, the great speckled bird uh, was the true church of God. It was also identified with the word of God or in the great gospel uh, of the scriptures. And by those things, by that uh, gospel of Christ, by the power of the gospel of Christ, we will be snatched away from this land, from this world, uh, and we will be born up to heaven as on the wings of that great speckled bird. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, for this time that we can uh, come together uh, by these means. Lord, just to read a portion of your word, to study it, to discuss it, Lord, to try to find its deeper truths and value for our lives. Lord, I thank you that my name is on your book. I thank you, Lord, that everyone who has truly believed and accepted Jesus Christ also has their name written in the Lamb's book of life. And Lord, we do look forward to that day when you call us home, when you bear us up as on the wings of a great bird, and usher us into your holy presence. Lord, I pray that everyone who hears my voice at this time, I pray that each one has truly surrendered to your will and has accepted your Christ as the atoning power of, for their sins and have received him as Savior. Lord, if there are others who have not yet come to know him as a personal Savior, I pray that right now they will fall down before you and will cry out for the forgiveness of their sins, that they will claim the atoning powers of the blood, the shed blood of Jesus Christ, and will be made whole and holy and presentable in your presence. Lord, be with us until we can meet again. Be with all those for whom we should pray. We pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.